Hi, this is Tim Camp for Music Radar, and I'm about to show you something kind of small, but kind of fat. It's the Meeblip Anode. Now, believe it or not, this is a full-on synth. It's got digital oscillators and an analog filter, and a mere four inches. I know for a fact that this will fit very comfortably into my pocket, and to prove its diminutive dimensions, here it is with an R. Kelly CD. There you go, tiny. So yeah, let's take this miniature Marvel out for a spin. Setting up the Mi Blip anode is a pretty simple task. You've got a uh, DC mains in, you've got a MIDI in, and you've got an audio out. That is pretty much it. There's really one way to rock this uh, setup, so uh, let's plug it in and get cracking. At the guts of the Mi Blip anode, we have got two pulse wave oscillators. Um, and these are tuned with the detune control, which detunes the second oscillator. And that goes up and down eight semitones. And you can also detune this oscillator down an octave with the octave switch. Put it back to unison D tune there. Uh, so now with the width control, we control the uh, width of both oscillators. And the synth also has PWM capability if we put it in sweep mode. And this sweeps the pulse width of just the first oscillator. And we can still use width to control the pulse width of the second oscillator. Okay, so the synth envelope is really, really basic. You've just got attack and a knobs. However, there's also a sustain mode, and in this mode it's attack, sustain, decay, um, and so the decay in effect becomes a release. The filter, again, really straightforward. It's some kind of, it's a twin T filter apparently, and it's some, it, apparently it's some kind of bandpass filter. It sounds like a low pass. A really fat low pass, albeit. So uh, yeah, let's have a listen. So yeah, pretty fat. And when you turn the res knob all the way up, you get a bit of uh, self oscillation creeping in there. So you get another kind of tone coming in. Now you can use the Synths LFO to control either the oscillator pitch modulation or the filter cutoff modulation, so let's check this out. Pretty fat. Now, there are also two secret controls which you can only access from MIDI continuous controllers, so you're gonna have to control them from your sequencer or a MIDI keyboard or something. And for those, we have a VCF envelope control, so.
doesn't go too crazy, but it's still pretty useful. And the other is a portamento. So there's some fun to be had there. So clearly the Mi Blip anode sounds great. It's a lot of fun to play with. Um, the feature set is slightly limited and there is no, there's no battery slot. You are just limited to mains power. So you can't play with it on the bus, I'm sorry. But what do you expect for 110 quid, which is the bargain price? Great value there. Especially, you know, if you're a starter, you wanna get playing with some analog synth kit. This is a, you know, this is a fantastic place to start. Um, I mean, you, you're probably not going to be too bothered if you've got a ton of analog synths already. You're probably not going to go here. But if you want to make some crazy sounds, um, especially if you're resampling, this is this is a cool toy because resampling will help you overcome some of its limitations. You know, you can't you can't trigger the LFO with a note on. Sampling will help you overcome that. It's you know, it's a really practical, with the MIDI in audio out, it's a really practical tool. I've, you know, it's more practical, I would, I think it's fair to say than the Korg Monotribes. It's real competition is probably the walled off rocket. I mean, it's, that's a little bit more expensive. It's like 60 quid more expensive or something. And it's got a fair bit more features, but at this price range, 60 quid is quite a lot. So, you know, it, it really holds its own. And the other thing about it is it's hackable. Electronically, Software-wise, I don't really understand, but if you're into that sort of thing, check out the meblip.com website and have a look. So yeah, overall, great.